There was a time when choosing a family hold all meant slipping into a life of middle aged mediocrity, but that was before the arrival of the crossover. Today we're putting two Edmunds A rated crossovers, the Toyota Highlander and the Mazda CX9, head to head in a five category comparison. I'm Alistair Weaver, your host and referee, and I'm joined by two Edmunds editors on the very cusp of middle-aged mediocrity. James Rizri representing the Highlander, and Mike Monticello representing the Mazda. Our first category is performance. Mike, tell us all about the CX-9. Here's what you need to know. The Highlander drives big, the CX-9 drives small. It has direct steering, confident handling. Sure, the Highlander has better brake numbers, but the pedal is kind of spongy, whereas the Mazda's brakes are nice and firm. And the CX-9's transmission is, like me, kind of smart. Uh, even when you're in regular drive mode, it always tells you the gear you're in, and when you're in cruise control, it automatically downshifts to keep the car at the set speed. You know, the Highlander is not only quicker from 0 to 60 than the CX-9, it's actually the quickest three-row large family crossover we've ever tested that isn't named Ford Flex EcoBoost. And Mike said it right. The braking distances on the Highlander are better than the CX-9 as well as for the class. And although the Highlander isn't as athletic as the CX-9, it's very poised, it's very confident, it's not the big doughy marshmallow that the old Highlander is. And I think for most people it's going to be a nice compromise of uh, vehicle dynamics. Both these vehicles prove just how far crossovers have come in recent times, but for me the Mazda just nips across the line first. Get my first point. If you're carrying up to seven passengers, it certainly helps if they're comfortable. James, will there be lots of smiley faces in the Toyota? Absolutely. You know, the Highlander is isolating, it's, it's comfy without being, you know, overly floaty. It is still composed, and I would say that the CX-9, especially when you have those big 20-inch wheels, can be a little borderline harsh. Now, the interior of the Highlander is incredibly quiet. And despite that fact, it actually has a neat feature inside of it where it has a microphone that it picks your voice up and sends it to the back to the screaming children. I wouldn't know anything about this, but I'm told the CX-9's front seats are well suited to tall people. But the seats in general uh, are really comfortable, really good lumbar support, and they're not quite as nice for all day touring as the Highlander. But get this, full-size adults can actually fit in the third row comfortably. And the one area that the CX-9 does come up short, the ride is on the firm side. So it's a tough call this one, but for its marginally better ride quality, the Toyota gets my vote. So Mike, tell us about the Mazda's interior. Well, in general, it's really nice, but shocking news alert, Mazda's not great at building functional multimedia screens. In this case, this one has small buttons and it's kind of slow reacting. But in general, the interior has lots of room. It's easy to get in and out. It has a really handy uh, one-touch second row uh, seat mechanism so you can easily get into the third row and it has lots of cargo room. It has four cubic feet more than the Highlander behind the third row, and when you fold all the seats down, it has 17 more cubic feet, so that's a lot of space. Mike's absolutely right. There's no getting around that the CX-9 has more maximum cargo area, but the Highlander has uh, more useful little cubbies here and there. There's a nice tray to put your cell phone and a big old center console. You can fit a person. I put a cereal box in there this morning. It has nicer material, both compared to the old Highlander as well as the CX-9. They're just fewer hard plastics, and there's this nice simulated leather on the dash. Again, it just feels a little more luxurious inside. Now, I could point out that the Highlander has eight seats, whereas the CX-9 has seven, but really, since the CX-9 has more room, it's more a matter of the Highlander simply having more seat belts. So this is a tough call. Do you want that extra seat belt, or do you want that little bit of extra room? For me, the Toyota's extra quality makes all the difference, and it gets my point. Mike, does the CX-9 put you off kids? This is a, a large three-row crossover that you're not going to be afraid to attack, say, a freeway on-ramp. You're even going to look forward to it. You know, it has sharp steering, competent, slop-free handling. You pretty much can't say that about any other three-row crossover. You know, I am sort of inclined to agree with Monty here about the CX-9. Um, but I would at least point out that the Highlander is night and day better than the old squishy pillow it replaces. And in general, it's just a nice, well-rounded vehicle. You know, it isn't sporty, but it also is, is it, it's engaging enough. It is confident enough. And I think for a lot of people, it's going to strike the right balance. Let's be honest about it. If you're making like Jeff Gordon in either of these vehicles, you're going to be met from moans from the back seat or even by vomit. 
but for those rare days when you are alone, the Mazda is the better drive. Get my point. So going into the final round, we're tied and it's all to play for. Now, as we know, regular breeding is expensive and big families need big value. James, does the Toyota deliver? Well, you know, the Highlander is a bit more expensive than the CX-9, but you do get more standard equipment, including a standard rear view camera and automatic headlights. Otherwise, equipment is similar, but there is more high-tech safety equipment available on the Highlander as well as it does have better crash scores. In terms of fuel economy, the Highlander gets two miles per gallon better, V6 to V6. Now there is a four-cylinder available, but it gets basically the same fuel economy as the V6, so why would you ever bother with that? And if we're going to expand the range, the Highlander is available in a hybrid. You know, CX-9 has decent but not amazing value, uh, but considering what you're getting at its 30 grand base price, standard touchscreen, Bluetooth, Pandora, HD radio, that's pretty good. You know, sometimes Mazda does cheap out on the interior plastics, and that kind of happens here. Unfortunately, the real-world fuel economy for the CX-9 was a bit dismal. We got 5 mpg less on our standard evaluation loop than we did versus the Highlander, so that was kind of a bummer, and I think I just killed myself on this. Yep, I think I might have won this one. Mike, that's, that's terrible. So it means that unless you have a passion for gas stations, there's only one winner here, and that's the Toyota. So overall, the Toyota has three points, the Mazda has two, and the Highlander wins our competition. Well done, James. But tell us, what do you think should have won? Be sure to click here for full reviews of the CX-9 and the Highlander. And for all the latest videos, subscribe to the Edmunds channel.